to throw me a rope, to hold me in place. Hi guys. I'm a little frustrated right now. This is take number five for this video. And it just refuses to get made. I think I've had more interruptions this morning than I've had a week. <laughs> Life happening. Okay. So, um, today's video is going to be about food and food issues. And personally, I... Um, have had food issues and I still have them to a certain extent. Not as bad as when, um, as of during my late teens and my 20s and even my early 30s, they were pretty bad. <clears throat> but um, I wanted to do this video to share and hopefully this will be able to help somebody else in case they're going through it and they don't know what to do or what to think of themselves or what maybe is really going on. But for me, food has always been a comfort and um, my drug of choice. I feel that everybody has something that they do to be able to soothe themselves or to make, take their minds off of whatever it is that they're going on. And all my life, food has been that for me. I distinctly remember when I was a kid and um, I realized that there was something about eating, particularly sweets, that just changed how I felt about things and I remember it was my mom she always made like cakes and um, sweets and confections and so on and we had them on hand in the house and there was this cake that she made it was um white with pink frosting it was a white cake and it had white and pink frosting on it and <clears throat> she had it on the table and I would continuously go back to it and cut off like pieces of it and I remember one of the pieces I had cut off and I was ashamed that I had eaten two or three pieces already and I went to the bathroom to go eat it and I remember being in the bathroom and um, savoring this cake but the way it made me feel was I could only imagine that it would be how someone who um, takes drugs would feel. There was a euphoria, there was a sense of elation, there was a sense of like, I can do anything. And it was really um, different type of feeling than any other foods that I had eaten up until that point. And I think it was about five or six, so I was pretty young and I remember this. And um, it kind of snowballed after that. I would hide food and eat it so my mom wouldn't see. I would lie about um, being hungry just so that way I can get whatever it is that I wanted to eat, which was sweets. I would um, sneak in the middle of the night to go to the kitchen and make um, peanut butter and sugar sandwiches. Um, even being somebody who was in a chair, I would go through all these elaborate lengths to be able to get my drug of choice, which is food, any type of sweet food. And this really became a problem for me when <clears throat> I was a teenager and I was in middle school. And there was a bus driver who um, was assigned to me that particular year. Uh, and she made a comment that I was getting a little heavy and that no man would like a fat woman. And that really set me over the edge. I remember going for three or four months with really not um, eating anything at all. And it started out with um, putting myself on the diet, like restricting what I was eating. And then it transformed into binging and purging. And then it just went to kind of the anorexic route, which I didn't want to eat anything at all. I think I was limiting myself to maybe 500 calories a day, which is ridiculous, ridiculous. And um, my mom got really, really worried because she understood better than I did at that point what my horrible eating situation was causing um, 
the type of damage it was causing to my body. My, and for those who don't know, um, if you are in starvation mode or if you are hungry, your body doesn't automatically go for the fat. It goes for muscle because it generates more um, energy with muscle by burning muscle than by burning fat. So the first thing it'll go for is muscle. And as somebody with a um, muscle condition already, that was really the worst thing that I could have done, which was, which was to stop eating, specifically to stop eating protein. Because it was, I was eating, I was allowing my body to eat itself um, from the inside out and taking my muscle, which is um, already compromised. So, um, it was a good three or four months where it was at its worst, where I wouldn't eat or I would eat very little. And um, looking back at it now, it was just a form of control for me to be able to have control over myself in a way that my disability didn't allow me to. Because <clears throat> when you have a disability, well, when you have a muscular, when you have a muscular dystrophy type disability, or any disability really, I, I should say, um, just a control that you no longer have over your body and for it to do whatever it is that you want it to do, you are subject to whatever the condition um, puts you through. And that was a really big issue for me. Uh, I guess I'm a control freak, you can say, and I want things to go the way I want them to go. And having growing, having to grow up with a disability that I can't control it, uh, and it does whatever it wants to do whenever it gets ready, um, that just kind of made me more anxious. And so um, the thing that I was able to control was my eating and what I put into my body and how my body looked. And that and my eating situations um, was an attempt to do that, to have some type of control over my life. And it was really, really difficult because there were times I was really, really hungry. But the conversation I was having in my mind was that... <clears throat> I'm already disabled. Um, I have to try to even out my odds as much as possible so that way I can be as desirable to someone as possible. And this was a conversation that I would have in my mind with myself at 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And um, it was very detrimental. It was very detrimental. I'm, I'm, I feel sorry that I did it, you know, knowing that I probably shaved off a couple of years of ability off of my life, but, um, you know, I can't take it back. And I feel that that's given me insight into myself more. And, um, you know, it's given me an understanding of maybe why people do certain things concerning food. Um, <clears throat> what kind of helped me to snap out of it and to work my way out of it was my mom. She saw how um, thin and emaciated I started getting and she was really worried and I made my mom cry. And I don't know about anybody else, but if you are a kid that does something to make your mom cry, you're just, whatever it is, you're going to stop. I don't know. So it took a really... Um, big will and shift for me to stop and to slowly work my way back into eating and um, I didn't eat well at first <clears throat> and honestly it wasn't until I was diagnosed with celiac that I really really began to eat better and on and off throughout um, my 20s I had different um, bouts of restricting what I was eating in a, as a way of controlling my life and the things that were uh, uh, uncontrollable in other parts of my life. So those things stay with you. And um, those comments that people make about people being fat or um, being overweight or getting kind of chubby or whatever, they stay with you. I remember 
you know, I was a kid, I was young when that bus driver made that comment and it stayed with me. I remember it still. I don't operate from that same space right now, thankfully. Um, <clears throat> but for a long time, it was over me in a way that I'm not even sure I can even articulate to you all. But <clears throat> um, my uh, moment, I think, of reckoning with my eating situations before the celiac really came when I was in therapy. Not for that, but for anxiety. Um, and we that, this is a, a theme that always came up about me and food issues. And um, my therapist helped me to realize the um, patterns that I was um, perpetuating. Um, if there was something that was uncontrolled or uncontrollable in my life in one aspect, I would try to assert control by food and, um, in a way, punishing myself and my body for it. And so when I came to that understanding and that realization, that was when I really kind of like, um, I had my light bulb moment. And um, I started really working my way towards uh, being better and um, not resorting to that type of behavior whenever there was something that I didn't like or was uncontrollable in my life. And the final push to get out of that was the celiac disease because celiac restrict is restrictive and from I had to find a way to live within the restrictions of the things that I could not eat because they were making me sick and that really opened my eyes and gave me the understanding that hey you know you have to come to some type of truce with food and eating so that way you can live uh, a healthy life and a long life so that is kind of where I am with the whole eating situation and um, I want to let people know that you can get through it um, I also want to let people know that it's not something that ever really leaves you you have um, moments where it's easy to um, control yourself in that type of way and even now I have to take precautions with my food and my eating in terms of portion control, um, everything I eat is portioned. So that way I won't overeat and I won't undereat. I'll eat just exactly what I need to eat. Um, and a lot of people are like, but why? You know, it costs more money to buy individual servings of things and so on and so forth. But I look at it as an investment in my life and regulating my life and saving my life. So um, I'm going to put some numbers and information at the end of this video. For anybody who may think that they have an issue with food, um, the best thing that you could do is to talk to somebody about it and to find help for it. Um, if it wasn't for my mom being there with me every step of the way, even though I made her cry, um, I don't think that it would have I would have been able to get through it and to um, <clears throat> want to get through it and to have a healthier sense of myself in relation with food and to stop using food as a um, balm or something to soothe my emotions. Um, you know, I, I don't think I would have been able to get through it if it wasn't for her. So, talk to somebody, guys. Um, there is an end to it. There is a way of handling yourself when you have an eating situation or eating condition or eating addiction. Um, you know, there's, there are other ways to deal with it besides what you're doing. Either binging or purging or both. Um, or just, you know, treating yourself very badly. Okay. So, I don't know. That's what I have to share with that. I hope that it will help somebody. As always, if you guys have any questions or um, comments or suggestions, inbox me. And um, I will answer them or I leave a comment and I will respond back I always do um, until then take care of yourself take care of your life and take care of each other all right guys